What's up everybody, welcome back to the garage. Today we've got not one, but two different welders to look at, even though they look quite similar. These were both sent to me by Chan Harm, who's the sponsor of today's video. They sent these to me at no charge, but as always, the thoughts and opinions in this video are my own and unbiased. So over here on the right, we've got the MMA 180CH. On the left, we've got the MMA 220CH. Now, I'm not real sure how they came up with the model numbers for these machines because they don't really correlate to anything. The MMA 180 is a 110 only 120 amp stick welder. The MMA 220 is a 160 amp 110 or 220 welder. So I thought the 220 correlated to the voltage. However, that's not the case with the 110 only model. So not sure where that comes from, but it doesn't matter. One of the first things you're gonna notice is there's not much else sitting here on this table in front of me like other reviews. That's because they only come with the leads, that's it. That is 100% okay with me because especially on these budget machines, uh, you're often paying for very low quality accessories like those masks on the stick that you hold in front of your face and some cheap gloves. So I'm not upset about it because odds are you're gonna replace those anyways. One awesome thing about both of these machines is the fact that they come with 10 foot leads for both the ground and the electrode holder. So super nice to have leads that long on a machine in these price points. And speaking of price points, the 180CH typically runs around $87 or $88. The 220 is right around $94 or $95. So not a huge price difference between these two. There will be links in the description below if you wanna check either of them out. I'll give you my opinion here in just a little bit, but it's probably pretty obvious to see which way is the better way or smarter way to go. But right now they're both 10% off on top of that already low price. So give them a look if you're interested in something along these lines. Now the next thing you're gonna notice is there's not much to these machines. There's a little display and there's a knob and that's it. There's no other settings. It's just a straight up amperage knob and you set it and go. On the back, there is a power switch. The 220 model is auto switching between 110 or 220, so nothing to do there. So one thing to note is that with the 220 model, when I said these things only come with the electrode holder and the ground clamp, that's all that comes with. So it has a 110 plug on it. You would need to buy the adapter to plug it into a 220 source if you wish to do so. They're not that expensive and they're easily available on Amazon. I'll link to one of those as well, just in case you need to pick one up. You'll notice these machines are very similar. They share the same case. So they're the same size, same weight, everything. And they're very well built. These are all steel. And then even the handle on top is steel. If I do have one minor gripe about that is that there is a bit of a rough edge on this 180 here. The 220 is not as bad, but there is a bit of a burr left that was painted over. So it can be a little sharp depending on how you grab it if you don't have gloves on. But other than that, overall build quality seems to be very, very good. Everything is held in with screws and nothing is loose or rattling around. These units are about nine pounds, a little over nine pounds, so they're not too heavy. And they're about 11 inches long, like four, four and a half inches wide, and like six and a half or seven inches tall. So both of these are very compact units and easy to move around. Just to go over the basic specs, let's start with the 180CH here on the right. It is 120 amps max, and at 120 amps, you would have a 60% duty cycle. 90 amps will get you a 100% duty cycle. So not a big range there as far as what you need to drop to to get that 100% duty cycle if necessary. But do keep in mind, you do only have a 60% at 120. Over here on the left, we'll take a look at the 220 now. I'm gonna go over the 110 options first because we just did this one, and then we'll go to the 220. At 110 volts, as a power source, you are limited to 110 amps. So you have 10 less amps to work with on the 220 machine at 110 volts. That is a 60% duty cycle. And if you drop it down to 85 amps, that is where you get your 100% duty cycle. However, if you go up to 220, you have 160 amp maximum output at a 60% duty cycle. And then you drop it to 120 amps to hit your 100% duty cycle. So 
overall a little lacking on the 110 side however obviously you can make up for that if you can run 220. other than that there's not a lot to these machines we'll take a look at them here and weld with them i'm going to use some 6013 just to keep things simple and i will run them both i don't think we're going to see too much of a difference between them with the rods that i'm going to use but i will do it for the sake of doing it Alright, so as you just saw, it welds just fine, get pretty decent results out of it, and I'm a little rusty, it's been a little bit since I've done any welding out here in the garage, but it worked fine. One thing to note is that the fan is always on with this machine, so it is a little bit noisy, but at a machine at this price point, it's not a huge deal, especially if you're looking for this to be portable and taking it outside and all that type of thing, that's perfectly okay. I'd rather this thing be cooling than not cooling, so... 100% okay with that fan running all the time. The knob is dampened a little bit, but it is a little touchy, so just something to keep in mind. Not a deal breaker by any means. Let me go ahead and get the 220 set up here. We'll do a few passes with that, and we'll come back for some final thoughts afterwards. All right, so the, both of these units worked great and did exactly what they were supposed to do. So I think for the money, I would go with the 110 220 model just to have that 220 capability if necessary, even though your maximum amperage at 110 is 10 amps less than the 110 model. I just think that having that capability for 220 is a greater benefit than the extra 10 amps of power with the 180CH. So with that being said, either of these machines would do just fine. I think these really fit a purpose if you don't weld often and just need one around. This is small, compact, lightweight, easy to store, also easy to carry around if you do a lot of on-the-go projects. They'd also be a great option to get and have something you could throw in the back of a truck without having to lug around a much larger machine or any gas bottles if stick welding is something that would get your job done. So if you have a farm or a ranch or larger property where maybe you need to go work on site at a project, this would be a great way to go to get that capability at a very affordable price point. Just make sure if you pick up one of these machines that you do end up getting your protective equipment there because there's nothing else included in the box. As I said earlier, the stuff that's normally included in these lower price point machines isn't of good quality or is just impractical. I mean, I don't know how you can weld holding you know a mask up to your face on a stick and then the gloves that are usually included are either not rated for welding or thick enough to be welding gloves or very low quality so not a big loss there just keep in mind you will need to get those things and then the biggest thing that i wish was different is that the 220 model came with that adapter to be able to use 220 out of the box uh, it's something that's not that expensive. As I said earlier, I have a ton of them laying around from just the other machines that I have. So it wasn't an issue for me. But if this is your only machine or first 220 machine, then you may not have one of those. So just be aware to grab one if that is your situation or your case. Other than that and the you know rough edge over here on this handle, there's nothing to really complain about. You turn them on, you set the amperage, and you start welding. That's all there is to it. Nothing to mess with and super simple so definitely give these a look as i said links in the description below for both of these machines as well as an adapter for the 220 if you go that route 